You are listening to Naked Soul Reflections, Mindful Moments for Clothes Free Living, with your host, Hantu Nehart. Greetings everyone, Hantu Nehart here, and welcome to another round of Naked Soul Reflection. This past week has been an interesting one for me. Um... There's been a lot on my mind, and the things on my mind do include some of the news stories, such as the police shootings and police being shot, and there's other world news as well. But it's also that these bits of news have reminded me of how close to home these sorts of circumstances can be. I have family in Dallas, Texas, and to think that, you know, my family is down there and concerned for how they're feeling and their safety Also thinking about the times that various black men in my family or loved ones have been beaten or mistreated or misunderstood, even when peaceable. They sat with me this week. They sat with me. Just being on my heart and mind. In addition to that, various interactions with people in my world, whether friends or colleagues at the office, no matter what the topic or the subject or the issue at hand, whether it has to do with wondering if my brother is going to be safe on the streets or a challenging interaction that I've had, whatever the subject, I found myself in a very... uncomfortable and challenged inquiry about, you know, what do I do? And I have to say, it was quite fortunate timing that last weekend I was in yoga teacher training and in that specific weekend session, Our teacher trainer talked about we talked about identity different identities that each of us individually um, connect with and how that might inform how we teach to whom we teach where we find ourselves And identity hasn't been a very easy subject for me because, I mean, yes, I'm black, but I've also had times when my blackness was questioned, whether I'm black enough and whatnot, identifying as a woman, identifying as lots of things, a person who works, um... Lots of different types of identities we could have. And the teacher made a point of talking about how important it is to be connected to what's going on in the world. Both in terms of the natural rhythms in all of nature. And in terms of the rhythms of our humanity being connected to it and 
understanding or getting clear on what our individual positions are, our passions, how we choose to act and be in the world with all of this in consideration. And I found that such an interesting and very important conversation, even if challenging. And in class this week, given the events that have taken place, she really made a point of talking about, she made a point of actually connecting our physical yoga practice to the current events. Not in a way that was to prescribe how anyone should feel, but calling us into being conscious and collective and choosing how to be and how to respond. I mean, there were times where she would say, like, let it make it personal. Even as we were moving through these various physical progressions, make it personal, make it political, the collective breath. I found that to be so critical because sometimes from where I sit, I wonder if people perceive yoga as this sort of separate yoga, crunchy granola, la la la, off into its magical land. And this sort of separation and distancing from what's actually going on. When in fact, that's not really the sense that I get. That's not really what I get as the original intention and purpose of it. As I'm reading um, Health, Healing, and Beyond by TKV Desi Kachar, he talks about this. He talks about this, um, how yoga is not actually meant to separate us or withdraw us from the world. How, as some might have us think or believe, there's no pretending that we're not here, that we're not connected. There's no separating ourselves from everything that's going on. I mean, even if you live in the mountains, you could still be affected by the pollution happening miles and miles away. So there's no escaping it. But rather, being here, being present to it. And I found myself, you know, just having so many questions about, like, what is yoga to me then? And, and what am I doing in this world? And more specifically, navigating the call to be in action as well as non-doing. So sometimes in yoga, depending on where we are in a physical practice, what the intention is or the feeling of it is, the mood, sometimes it is very active, like call to action. What... Who are you being? What are you doing about whatever it is that's on your heart? And at other times, we practice non-doing. And I thought, so what does this, how do I know when I'm supposed to act and when I'm not supposed to act? And I thought about this a lot even before the events of last week. I thought about it, you know, in conversations with friends. What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? Things at work. Um, Do I do something? Do I not do something? How do I know what the appropriate thing is? And then this past Saturday, there's a group called Black Girl in Ohm, and they hosted a call in meditation. Just, and um, from what I recall, the purpose was actually meditation as a practice of self-care in a time when so many major things are happening. So meditation as being a very critical way of 
taking care of yourself. And in that meditation, we were very, uh, it was very foundational, just speaking to breath, being present to how each of us are feeling, whatever that is, but really just focusing on breath and how we feel in our bodies, understanding our connection to the ground, the earth, whatever was supporting us. And I found that so grounding. And after that meditation, I got clear on the fact that it's not about me choose, you know, having to choose one or the other in terms of I must do something or being or non-doing, but rather what meditation and yoga practice generally, but very much meditation, what it's helping me to do is be grounded and if I don't really know what to say or do, then to engage non-doing until it becomes clear to me what the actual course of action is is so if I find myself if I sit back and I observe my thoughts and see that they're more like a stirring chaotic erratic kind of all over the place situation then really um, I might be trying to think of something that I should do like well maybe I should do this or maybe I should say that in response to this and blah 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 if I'm really searching and trying to figure out what I should be doing, then perhaps sitting back and non-doing is actually my practice until intuitively the next step drops in me. And I've had that experience. It's a very real, clear, as if like a raindrop falling into a lake. That's how clear it is. And so being that lake, that still body of water, until the drop comes and informs, okay, and it might be something simple, just three words to say in response to someone. Perhaps not in the moment. Perhaps 20 minutes later, several years later. But to be okay with non-doing until that drop comes and informs what I should do and then actually doing that. So I want to offer that not even, not solely in terms of whatever societal current events might be taking place certainly there but even within your personal space it could be something as simple as if you find yourself like obsessing over food like maybe I should eat this maybe I should eat that maybe I should eat this then maybe not eating anything until it becomes absolutely clear what you should eat even if you don't think it's the right thing even if you're like really a scoop of ice cream Or it could be a very societal, communal thing. Not doing until it's clear to you, okay, I actually do want to hold a town hall meeting. Because I'm clear that this conversation needs to take place. For me, it's very much about letting go of compulsion this 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 need to like do and act and eat and this and that and like what should I be doing and it's flying all over the place it can be very compulsive sometimes and so or impulsive and just non-doing 
deep breathing until intuitively it comes. And once it comes, then taking the action. So I offer this to you this week. In any area of your life, whether it's something very internal, very individual and personal to you, whether it's relational, interpersonal between you and another, whether it's communal, societal, whatever the level is, carefully navigating non-doing and action. And meditation as a tool to help discern. This has been a really important tool for me, particularly when I was navigating uncomfortable conversations recently. I found myself, you know, thinking ahead of time, maybe I should do this, maybe I should say that. Or just show up and listen. And not say anything until it drops intuitively. I send my peace to you, all my friends. Namaste.